There's no doubt we understand the idea, of course, of routes and redistribution, but what can we do to affect those the way that we want to? We'll find out more next right here on IT Pro TV. You're watching IT Pro TV. All right, we are jumping into the realm of route maps today and here to give us better context on when we would actually use them and how we're going to use them effectively, Anthony Sequeira. All right, Anthony, there's no doubt that as we come from the CCNA uh, part of, of our studies and learning, more than likely, if anything, kind of gets a little bit confusing. Of course, redistribution is probably the big one. But right after that, it's going to be the use of route maps and where they're actually used effectively and, and how do we actually get them to actually work the same way that we want them to. So, Anthony, where are we going to begin? Yeah, you know, that's a great point, Ronnie. I didn't think about that. You know, route maps can be a little confusing for students when they're first starting out. And then you just reminded me that one of their biggest confusions is they're used for so many different things. Uh, Ronnie's very handy. And one of the things that Ronnie can fix is automobiles. And I bet you even Ronnie in the automobile industry has used duct tape. <laughs> I always like to think of route maps as like the duct tape inside of our routing studies because we can use this tool for so many different things. We can use it for attribute manipulation in border gateway protocol. We can use it to tag prefixes in OSPF. We can use it to do policy-based routing on a router. These are just some right off the top of my head that I'm kind of randomly picking when we go across all the different pro protocols. Remember now, route maps are not specific, therefore, to any one job, and they're also not specific to any one protocol. That's why we're covering them in this section of our NRC studies. Now, you actually mentioned something, Anthony, this idea of actually doing policy uh, uh, type of routing here for a moment. Can you explain that a little bit more? Because that may be the first time maybe somebody coming from the CCNA has really even heard yeah. about that too much. Yeah. And you know, what great news is we get to shoot an entire episode dedicated to that, which I think is so valuable because that is kind of one of those mind melts for people relatively new to Cisco networking. The policy-based routing feature is so cool, Ronnie. It allows us to construct a route map that's going to give the instructions for how routing is going to go. And then we end up applying this with a policy routing command underneath the interface. So we can take a Cisco router and make it route however we want it to. Nice. We can override the default routing table. And you might say, well, isn't that what a static route is for? Well, this goes well beyond static routing. This allows us to go in and like do multiple things. Like we can see that the traffic is for a certain destination and we can add a quality of service marking and then send it on some like different path. So the sky's the limit essentially. And it's a really exciting feature. Now, Anthony, that sounds almost like trying to set up some conditions that we can actually route by. So we want something to go uh, from one router to, to a specific router. It sounds like I can actually do some conditions on that. Is that what you're talking about in terms of policy? Absolutely. And, and that all, and that brings us back to, you know, our main topic here, which is route maps. That all really just um, is that, that capability, that amazing policy-based routing capability is really all because of the magic of a route map, which is uh, an if-then kind of programmatic logic. In fact, what do you say, Ronnie? Should we jump on the equipment and just show everyone uh, the route map in action? I often find that this is one of those uh, kind of technologies that really is best demonstrated as a way of teaching it. Right. So uh, here we are on this R3 device. I just quickly spun up some devices inside of Cisco's Viral. The topology, don't worry about it, okay? This is just really to focus in on route maps. Um, just a simple topology that I spun up. And you can see I've done the show IP BGP on this device. And when we look in the routing table for BGP, in fact, let me back up. What we're looking at right here is the BGP topology table. And so it's not the routing table. But when we look in the BGP topology table, we can see this prefix right here for 192.168.01 slash 32. 
And we can see, sure enough, by default, it has a Cisco weight value of zero. So the default weight, boy, wouldn't this be great for Weight Watchers, is zero. And the uh, default weight, by the way, just out of curiosity at this point, for a prefix that we advertise, notice is going to be 32768. And a higher weight is the first thing that a Cisco router would prefer when choosing the best path. So weight's a very important, powerful value in Border Gateway Protocol. And we can see, again, zero is the default for routes we learn, and then 32768 is the default weight for routes we generate. Well, what if we wanted to give that incoming 192.168.01 prefix a higher weight? How the heck would you do that? Well, a route map comes to the rescue like it does in so many different cases. So the first thing that I'm going to do, and I'm glad we're getting a sneak peek at some of this BGP-related stuff, the very first thing that I'm going to do here is I'm going to do what's called a prefix list. A prefix list is a very, very cool, flexible, straightforward way in which to identify prefixes instead of having to use an access list, which is a pretty cumbersome way to do it. So I'm going to say IP prefix list, and I'll be real silly here and just call it my list, and then I'll get some context-sensitive help. I want to permit, and then I give the prefix and the prefix mask length all in one handy statement. So I'm going to say 192.168.0.1 slash 32. Wow, what an easy, simple way to call out a particular prefix. And now the syntax we're really interested in, I say route map and give it a name. Again, not being creative, I'll call it my map. And then our context sensitive help, we do a permit or deny on the route map, which would have like filtering logic if you were using this to filter. But in our case, we're using it to set the weight to a custom value for this incoming prefix. So I'm going to say route map, my map, permit. And then what's next? We can do a sequence number. So I can start the sequence numbering at 20 if I wanted to not start at the default of 10. Now we're in route map configuration mode, as you can see, and we match on traffic. This is kind of like the if part of the if then programmatic logic. So I say match IP address, and it was called my list. Oh, in fact, I think I have to say match IP address prefix list. There we go, my list. So if we match on the prefix specified in that prefix list, which was, of course, 192.168.01, the route in question here, then I'm going to say set the weight. And let's do a number that would jump out at us. How about 7,777? <laughs> so look at that, an if-then programmatic structure called a route map. And in this case, we're using it to set a BGP attribute which, by the way, is a super real-world uh, you know, application of this feature. So, Ronnie, there's a big problem here, though, if I ended this now. And in fact, uh, this would be really dramatically witnessed if we were learning like thousands of prefixes, which is very realistic for BGP, from uh, our neighbor. If I ended this now and attached this route map into the BGP config, sure, it would set the weight to 7,777 for that prefix I called out, but it would then deny all of the other prefixes from coming into the router because there is an implicit deny here, just like we have with an access list. So what I need to do here is I need to just use my up arrow. I'll do a line called line 40 that is just to permit everything. So notice I have that kind of empty line, that empty segment of the route map at the end, and that would permit all other prefixes the way I'm using the route map. Now, Anthony, with this uh, single line that actually is going to give us that permit all, is there sort of like in the access list where we can actually put that in and then put in like a keyword log at the end? 
Is that something that can be done so that we can see if it's actually working or not? Uh, that isn't done, but the okay. great news is that we have uh, logging on the route map. Nice. So here you can see it, Ronnie. So we don't have to do anything special. When I do my show route map, it will give you a breakdown of the route map that you've constructed. And notice there's, you know, uh, policy routing match information, right? Built right in there. Uh, so when we use the route map from a policy routing perspective, we have a built-in counter. All right. Now, Anthony, is this uh, sort of like also, I, I keep going back to access list because that's what CCNA students are probably going to be most uh, comfortable with trying to compare that to from what you've actually, from what we've seen so far. So you've actually created the route map. So where are we going to apply this? Didn't you say it's in the router config or is it on the interface that we'd actually apply something like this? Great call. So um, I love what you said there. You know, a lot like access lists, right? Um, this thing's all fancy and beautiful and it's useless <laughs> because right now it's not applied anywhere. And I love what you brought up there, Ronnie. Where do we apply it? Would it be here? Would it be there? Well, it all depends. What are we doing with it, right? So we are manipulating a BGP attribute. So we're going to be applying this in BGP. But if this were a policy uh, routing scenario, then we would be applying this to none other than uh, the policy route statement that's under the interface. So, oh, and by the way, Ronnie, you asked a great question about logging. Um, if you wanted logging, right, associated with details of the route map, one fun way to go would be to use an access list and turn logging on for that ACL oh. entry. Yeah, yeah, so now you're getting the ACL logging, and that ACL, of course, is used in the route map. All right, so what we're going to do here, Ronnie, is we're going to get this thing applied. I mean, after all, this is all fun and wonderful if it actually works. Now, just to make sure there's nothing up my sleeve, let's do that show IP BGP one more time. And we want to make sure that the 192.168.01 prefix does indeed have the weight of zero still. And we hope to change that with the work that we've done in the route map. So I'm going to go router BGP1, and I am going to say neighbor 10.0.0.0. .0 .0 Five, I do believe we are neighboring with. And I'm going to say, oh, look at that. They doesn't allow me to enter the route map command there because we've actually done the address family configuration mode style here in BGP. Don't get freaked out by this if you haven't seen it in a while or never seen it. Um, we'll be covering this in great depth with you here in an RC, but I just need to go in there and do my statement. So I go neighbor. 10, 0, 0, 5, and then I say route map, and it was my map, and we have to give a direction. So we want this to apply to incoming routes. And that error right there, specify the peer group, whatever, this just means that I did the wrong neighbor IP address there. And so let me just do show run pipe section BGP, and I just need to remember what neighbor uh, IP address that I'm working with, and it's, I wasn't even close, it's 10009. <laughs> All right, so here we go, we're gonna go neighbor 10009, and we're gonna do route map in, I'm gonna end, and we're gonna do our show IP BGP, and this is a point, Ronnie, where we have to remember that BGP isn't all about convergence. And so that can be really tricky when troubleshooting. So we're kind of troubleshooting this route map right now, aren't we? Because we applied it and we've got no change for this incoming prefix. Yikes. But remember, I went and looked pretty quickly so I chatted with you for about 30 seconds there, and that was enough time to have the convergence kick in. And notice we got a nice lucky sevens, seven, 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 seven weight for that prefix in question. Now, going back to your neighbor statement that you did, so what we're actually saying when we do the inbound there is that, is this an update to my router that's coming in, or am I actually pushing this out that the other routers are actually able to see 
Yeah, so let's envision that, Ronnie. So we, in fact, let's do this. Show run pipe section BGP. Uh, let's take a look at the command. And there is the command. And it's a BGP command, neighbor, the neighbor ID, route map, my map, in. So what's exactly happening here, Ronnie, is we have the prefixes coming in via the 10.009 okay. hearing, and the route map is applied as BGP updates are coming in. Okay. So this local router, R3, it looked at the updates coming in to see if any were involving the 192.168.01 prefix. When it saw that update, it set the weight of that prefix to the all sevens and then installed it into the BGP topology table. Now, does that get moved into the routing table? Well, if everything's okay with the reachability and stuff involving that prefix, sure. And there we can see that prefix in the routing table. Notice it's pretty interesting that the uh, the weight, of course, isn't shown there. Right. The weight is not something that shows up in the routing table. The weight, remember, is in the BGP topology table. There it is. And that could help pick this prefix to be advertised into the routing table, but it's not shown in the routing table. Now, so, I, yeah, sorry about that. I, I do oh, have no a problem. question uh, that uh, it's now that we've actually affected this on your uh, third router, I'll call it router three here. Now that we've affected it there, do I need to consistently go throughout my, my particular interior BGP to ensure that I have the same thing all the way around? Or is this just a router by router um, a route map that we actually use? Yeah, so excellent question. So the way we did this, we constructed a route map and set that route map for the directionality, right, on appearing of updates to influence those. And that, in this example, would only be done here. And this is why I say that. Weight, remember, is a locally significant okay. value. Right. So when this R3 device sends this update on to, let's say, R4, R4 is going to receive it, and it's going to strip any weight value okay. because by default, because again, uh, wait a minute, <laughs> whoa, back up the truck. To be technically accurate here, the weight isn't even sent. Right. Okay, so yeah, this, uh, this R3 device is not going to be sending the weight attribute along with the prefix in BGP. The router creates the weight, and we know that would be zero by default when the R4 device receives it. So this was an interesting example, Ronnie, in that uh, not a lot of workload on us. We might just be doing this on this single router. And remember, by the way, it's worth just kind of refreshing about this. Remember, the weight is a very, very, very fast and efficient, surefire way. It's the first thing the local router would look at. If we had a bunch of different paths, Ronnie, in BGP to get to that prefix, the weight is the really quick tiebreaker that we can set. All right, Anthony. Well, thank you again for helping us to kind of get started here in terms of route maps and being able to actually be able to use them a little bit more effectively. We can actually apply it here as well as some of the other contexts that Anthony had mentioned, but make sure you pay attention to them as you're likely to see them again, not only here, but also, of course, on questions on the NRC exam. Well, that will do it for this particular episode then. Signing off for IT Pro TV, I'm your host, Ronnie Wong. And I'm Anthony Sequera. Stay tuned right here for more of your Cisco and Narcy show. Thank you for watching IT Pro TV.